Hi there, you're on Gossip Says channel. Enjoy watching, subscribe and like it. It's growing our community. Story 1. Do I, 53F, keep living with my addict boyfriend, 48 meters? A. And I have been together, on and off, for 23 years. We met while I was going through a horrible divorce, and he was what I needed at the time. I'm not exactly sure what caused my recent great awakening, perhaps menopause, but I just can't do it any longer. We haven't had sex in a year and a half. First it was alcohol in the 90s, crashing cars, dwiz, and then going to jail. He hasn't touched alcohol in over 10 years. But what he does do is get methadone. This has been for at least three years now. He can work construction all week, and then by Friday night he picks up and crashes the whole weekend till it's time for him to go back to work. I never know what I am going to find on the weekend. Him passed out on the garage floor, stooped over in the bathroom, etc. I've narcaned him once. I used to vape weed for years and this year I just felt like I've had enough of dulling my senses. I used it as an escape. I like feeling clear-headed and being productive. Maybe that's the real reason why I am feeling empowered now. He has never hit me or been verbally abusive towards me. He's on prescriptions for depression and anxiety. I'm the one who gets shouty from his behavior and I hate being that way. I've done Al-Anon, but I think I'd do better with my therapist who specializes in drug counseling. She is quick to tell me to get him out, but also ignoring that he pays me rent which I definitely need. I started wearing a heart monitor because my anxiety has been really bad this year. I suffer from insomnia from a lot. He lives in the lower section of my house and pays rent. $1,000 a month. I need that money for taxes and utilities. My NY taxes have nearly doubled in the past eight years, and my salary has remained pretty much the same. Similar jobs to mine pay less in my area. Earlier this year, I told him that we're like roommates at this point. Last night he told me he can't take living like this anymore. That I am cold to him. He wants us to be in a regular relationship again. I asked are you in recovery? He's been to rehab twice. No, he said he is not. I said, then you are relapsing. I have known of at least 10 instances where he has been using this past year. I'm sure it's much greater than that. Going to a meeting a couple of times a month is not recovery. My dilemma is with money. Normally I would be fine and ask him to just leave, but things have gotten so expensive that I now sell on eBay for extra cash. It's actually a fun hobby for me, I don't mind it. I'm taking a Google certificate to add to my skills at work, possibly to upgrade to a new remote job. I feel like I am improving myself. I also see myself dating because I want to move on, but don't know how to kick him out because I need to pay my bills. Also, to add to the mix, I've been a dog rescuer and rehabber for 15 years. It's a passion of mine. I found home for over 30 dogs. He does help with them somewhat. How could I rent out my bottom rooms with seven dogs in the house? Who would pay to live in that situation? Who would date me with seven dogs? Do I get a home equity line of credit, high interest nowadays, and just let my bills pile up for a while? It's such a weird feeling. I feel strong and but also so incredibly scared for my future. I can visualize being in a different, more healthy relationship. But I don't know if that's because I tend to look at things half full and just hope for the best. Maybe that's why I've stuck around so long. I told him last night to go work on himself and that I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Selling on eBay, dog rescue, getting Google certificate. And then we'll see how it is by the new year. Am I being very naive? Scared? I can see a future without him. I just don't know how to get there. Any kind words of help would be greatly appreciated. I know this is a long read. Thank you for letting me vent. Story 2. Me, 26M, and my girlfriend, 25F, have been constantly arguing for a while now. Four-year relationship. Long distance. Is there a way we can continue this relationship? Hi everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank you for clicking this post and reading. Hopefully, you have some good advice for me as I'm honestly lost and don't know what to do with this anymore. Maybe some new insights will open my eyes and either find a way to fix it or realize it's too broken. Backstory time. In my previous relationship, I've been cheated on by my ex. 
She first told me that she just kissed this guy that I warned her about that he had no good intentions. After a lot of talking and being angry, I ended up forgiving her and wanting to move forward. But there was still this feeling inside of me that something wasn't right, a gut feeling. So from time to time I'd bring it up again and ask questions, which led to her getting angry at me and even ridiculing me after a while. The angry part I'd understand if you had told the truth. So when she after another year decided to come clean and tell me that she did sleep with the guy, my trust was again broken. My gut feeling was right all along. I had been lied to to my face for over a year. I had been ridiculed, told to let it fucking go, and that it's all in my head. This broke me even more. At this point I wasn't even sad about breaking up with her. What pained me was the feeling of betrayal and that I had been right all along. I felt so disgusting. Backstory Current Relationship we met four years ago over a video game, where when we met she says she instantly felt something for me from the first day. The way I behaved and presented myself spoke to her. I wasn't looking for anything at the time but I was open to it. I developed feelings the more time we spent together, one-on-one -on -one in Discord calls, speaking and playing games together. She lives in the Middle East and I live in Europa, so it's a long-distance relationship. The first year went great but at the end we had constant arguments. She was Muslim and I wasn't, and she'd be giving up so much to be with me. And this struck a lot of arguments as I was very stubborn at the time regarding religion. My eyes have been open towards Islam now as I have done my own research and found happenings in the faith and will be converting once I finish reading the Quran. No need for advice on that. We constantly argued and she broke up with me twice to then fix it two hours later and the third time I told her it was over as I wasn't able to reason with her, and we left off. For six months, me breaking up and actually leaving her broke her. She told me that she was everything I wanted, caring, wanting to be with me all the time, and that after the breakup, she lost her self-worth. But she kept holding on and after six months, we ended up back together. I still cared for her a lot, but I thought with all the trouble, it'd be hard for us to end up together. But it's what I wanted to try. I wish I hadn't made that decision but unfortunately I can't turn back time. It's the worst decision I've ever made. We got back together and met in person and from the first second it was amazing. We had a vacation together doing a lot of sightseeing and spending actual time together. Then she got a job that allows her to travel quite frequently and with a discount, so she visits me here every now and then. But it's not a lot, maybe once every three months. We have had two vacations together so still most of the relationship is online, where we used to be in calls all day and sleeping together. We play video games together, just sit and enjoy each other's company while we're working or both playing our own game, sleeping when the other person sleeps. But recently, she wanted to reconnect with an old friend group, which is fine with me if she plays in a group, but she also wants to play with them one-on-one, -on -one, being in a call with them alone and spending the entire day and night playing games together. I don't feel comfortable with this, even though she has known these guys for over eight years and they have girlfriends and she never got hit on by them or she has never felt anything for them besides friendship. What she told me. I simply do not want to create an environment where she can be in that spot where something like that had happened and I'd lose her. But she keeps arguing that she should be allowed to and this and that. However, as of lately we're arguing so much again, back and forth, and I feel like I'm not getting as much attention as I used to. She stays in the call, playing with her friends and being muted, and when we spend a morning together while I am at work, had a conversation, and then she left to play with her friends slash friends again. They get like seven to eight hours of her time. She doesn't speak to me during it at all. Unless she has a break in their game, I get like 2-3 to three minutes before she doesn't respond for another 20-25. to 25. She admitted it last night, that what makes her happy is spending time with her friends, gaming with these guys. And that gaming with me is no longer fun due to all the arguing. She doesn't enjoy her time with me. But she wants to still be in the relationship however, I'm not her main priority anymore. Her main priority is herself and her happiness and the only way she achieves happiness is by gaming with her friends. Again, all according to what she said. Now I want to spend time with. I want to be included, not excluded like I have been lately. I wanted us to try new games, but she said she never enjoyed any of them. 
she said that she'll spend time with me if we're doing anything fun. So I asked her what besides gaming is fun for you then. She replies with ick. We sometimes watch movies or shows together. But she's honestly never in the mood for those. It's always like no not now, and she jumps back on her game, even if her friends are not online. So basically, she wants me to exist, while she plays video games with her friends and spends it in one-on-one -on -one calls with them, while she can be in a call with me in the morning until they show up, to just speak or probably sit quiet in there because there's nothing to speak about, and then in the afternoon slash evening leave to spend time with them because I have already received my quota of attention, leaving me alone for the entire evenings, not having anyone else to play with because I always spend all my time on her as well, leaving me feeling alone, excluded and by receiving the cold-hearted treatment by her. She says it's all my fault for breaking her 25 years ago and that she's not the same person anymore. She will never put anyone else before her, especially not me. She told me I could be a part of her life, a big part if I wanted to, but not be everything to her. And honestly, I don't know what to do with that. I'm still not comfortable with her being one-on-one -on -one with other guys, and me not getting any attention will just leave me depressed like I am feeling now and only long for her attention more. What do you all think reading this? Is there something we could do to fix this? Does it sound like it's game set and match already? Any helpful insights are welcome. Thank you for reading. Story 3. Am I, F31, a pain in the asterisk asterisk, or is he, M29, being a bit of an asterisk asterisk hole? My partner, M29, stayed over at mines, F31. We woke up together Friday morning, and before we both left for our jobs, we discussed the possibility of going for a weekend hiking slash camping trip. A few hours later, I get a text from him saying that he's sorry, but that what he actually needs is time to himself. I said that's absolutely fine and that he should go out there and get his solo time. I still very much felt the need to go camping, so I started making plans for myself. I was hoping to be able to spend some part of the weekend with him regardless, and wondered what his me time would involve and when or if he'd be available at some point. He is the kind of person that regularly needs to go off-grid, disconnect, improvise and decide what he's doing as he goes. This is something that causes some friction between us given my past history with a cheating ex. My ex told me he was going to a weekend tennis tournament, then disappeared for a week, wouldn't answer my calls sent some vague texts and said something about needing time to himself. He finally came home, tried to act as if it were normal to disappear like that. We had a big fight and broke up. Things were already not great. Two months after that I learned that during that trip he had gone to see a girl he had a parallel relationship with. My partner knows about this and I've told him it is very anxiety inducing for me when he disappears like that and I don't know where he's gone. On the other hand, he really needs to be able to have his time to get away, leave his phone off and go as he pleases. He doesn't even know where he'll be so it's hard to let me know what the plan is. We've tried to find a compromise. I told him I don't need to know where he is every step of the way, but a message when he's leaving and maybe a general direction or time frame would be enough. Now back to this weekend, after our text and change in the morning, we didn't talk anymore until that evening around 6 p.m. When he asked if I was going to some party I was invited to. I said no, since I wanted to go camping and was looking at spots to go spend the weekend. I got no answer. I fell asleep around midnight with still no answer. Saturday morning, I wake up early to pack and find a message from him at 2.30 a.m. saying he's sorry he didn't reply and asking if I'm alright. I responded that I was up, a bit disappointed. We didn't get to go on a weekend adventure together but that I respected his needs. I also asked what he was doing at 2.30 am. By the time I was ready to hit the road still no answer. Around 2 pm when I was about to hit a no phone coverage area I got a message from him. He said he had been at a party and asked yet again if I was going to my friend's party or if I wanted to join him for a night bike ride. At this point I was really pissed. I had been trying to have a conversation with him since Friday night. I had already said I was going camping and he wasn't even acknowledging that. To make things worse, he even had fun plans for us to do that night. Apparently his me time was over. From the moment I woke up to his 2.30 a.m. message until he replied at 2 p.m. my mind imagined 100 different scenarios. 
I honestly thought he had taken a night ferry out of town to go on a hiking trip he's been talking about for a while. I am upset that knowing how much anxiety this brings to me. He still decided to not communicate anything about what he was doing. Had I known he only needed a morning of me time, maybe we could have even gone camping together. He even seemed surprised when a few hours later, after I got service again I told him I was out of town. I sent him a message saying I wasn't happy with the way we were communicating this weekend, that I felt neglected and ignored, and how he wasn't honoring the compromise we had agreed on. I said I was going to stay out of town and needed the weekend to myself. He responded saying we should talk when I get back and to let him know when I'm in town again. A part of me feels stupid for being upset about him not texting me back, but I feel like it's more than that. I'm struggling to properly identify why I'm so upset, and I know he's going to play it down saying I can't get mad because he's not on his phone the second I need an answer. A part of me feels that if I had just gone about my weekend trip assuming he would be out of reach and not expecting anything it wouldn't need to become a thing. Did I make this into some drama or am I right to think he's been a bit of an asshole? P.S. I really trust him. I don't think anything dodgy was going on at that party. I just don't like the fact he ignored my messages and didn't turn up until the next day.